Hello everyone, and welcome to this new video tutorial for Maverick Render. In today's video, you will learn how to use tone mapping and the image comparator. Let's use one off the sample scenes, the headphones for example. The scene has loaded and is rendering. Let's configure the render settings. As usual for scene setup, it is recommended to use the ultrafast preset for the best interactivity. The denoiser option can help get a cleaner preview faster. You can expand the render to full screen to give it more space by holding the control key and hitting the tab key once. Clicking anywhere on the render will automatically pop the attribute editor panel back in. Let's bring back the tone mapping panel and the AB comparator one. Now let's take a look at the tone mapping panel itself. It provides a very important set of features to control how your final image looks. It is basically a post-production tool embedded into Maverick. Most importantly, every tone mapping parameter affects the render in real time, requiring no render restart. On the main tab, you will find presets to give a specific mood to your image in just one click. The black and white for example, which removes color saturation. The default preset, to return all parameters to their default. The high contrast preset to give some punch to your images. The low contrast which helps giving more post-production latitude if you edit your image after saving it. And the post-pro presets which are examples of custom parameters saved as presets. For now, we will reset the parameters using the default preset. The parameters are now all defaulted and we will start editing and see how they affect our render. You can freely select a color space to work with and it will be used for the saved image. The image gamma can be edited. A value of 2.2 is recommended for computer display. Remember that you can return any slider to its default value by right-clicking on it. The exposure slider controls the image brightness, just the same as if you change the camera f-stop or the shutter speed, but it does so in real time. The burn parameter is a very important one. This slider allows you to prevent highlights to burn to full white, revealing details in the brightest parts of the image. Use with care, two low values will tend to look unnatural. Reset the burn slider before we continue. The curves parameters offer a very powerful way to radically change an image. They work very similarly to their counterparts in photo editing software. There you will find the contrast slider for example. The shadows slider allows to lighten or darken the less illuminated parts of your render. The blacks and white sliders control under which luminance value pixels are clamped to black, and above which value they are clamped to white. Highlights controls the most illuminated parts of your render, and midtones is the range between highlights and shadows. In grading controls, you will find more parameters. Like vibrance, which is similar to saturation, but it only raises the low saturation colors, leaving already saturated pixels untouched. The saturation slider on the other hand, affects all pixels equally. The temperature slider allows to compensate for a too warm or too cold lighting. The tint slider compensate for lighting situation washed in green, as it can easily happen with nature environments with a lot of green shades. The loot selector proposes many presets to mimic classic film. There are about 50 presets of old classic films, reproducing vintage photography look. The Colors tab allows to control the hue, saturation, and value for ranges of colors. Expend the hue rollout and enable the controls by flipping the switch. Try and adjust the red slider for example. This will affect only the red colors and shifts their hue toward the next or the previous shade. The saturation rollout sliders do just the same, but for saturation. They take a short range of colors, like the reds, and change their saturation. And the same goes for the value rollout sliders. This is a very convenient way to apply color correction to specific color ranges. The levels tab also proposes a very interesting set of controls. It allows you to control the overall level of colors in shadows, midtones and highlights independently. For example, enable the shadows rollout controls. Lowering the red shadows slider makes the red colors shift toward cyan, in the shadowed parts of the image. Increasing the blue slider increases the blue tones in the shadowed parts. The same principle goes for midtones. 
The green or the blue sliders are shifting colors in the midtones. And again, same thing for highlights. A little more red or a little less blue in reflections and highlights. Alright, the last thing to see here is the hot pixel removal tool. This tool is extremely useful when your scene has a tendency to produce fireflies or hot pixels. If you notice sparse and bright noise in your image, enable the hot pixel removal and they will instantly disappear. Our last panel is the AB comparator. Take a snapshot using this button. A new thumbnail of the current render appears in the list. You can take as many as you want. Now make a change to the scene, for example by simply loading a tone map preset, such as the default one. Go back to the AB comparator panel, and take another snapshot. You now have two snapshots, displayed in the order they were taken. Using the A and B buttons, mark one as A and the other as B. To now compare the images, look for the AB comparator icon at the top left of the render view. You can also press the B key on your keyboard. The render window now displays both snapshots at their full size, separated by a splitter that you can drag with the mouse. The A image is always placed to the splitter's left, while the B image is always to the right. You can now compare both images, for example to decide which one looks best. Dragging the splitter allows to compare every part of the image side by side. Your AB comparator snapshots can be saved to your hard drive. Saved snapshots can be loaded back into the AB comparator later. As you can see, the tone map panel has a lot to offer to edit your images directly inside Maverick, saving precious post-processing time. Thank you for watching this video. Have fun rendering with Maverick!